Hello again my beautiful YouTube family, this is Karima back with another guide, tips and advice video this time for uh, Hogwarts Legacy, a new game fresh out of the factory, um, in this case um, I've been very interested in trying this game, I've been waiting for this game for quite some time, um, so has everybody else to be honest. Um, so. This is a bit different than my usual build videos. Um, I will be talking about build as well, uh, but I will not be talking in detail about certain aspects of creating a build just yet. The reason being, as I will explain uh, further on and you will guys be able to see for yourselves, is that although you can see I'm level 20 right there, um, I am pretty early on in terms of the main story. Um, so if I if I leave my uh, controller there, you can see I have about 10 hours in game, um, which is it's not a massive amount of hours, but it does allow for a lot to have happened so far. Uh, in all honesty, I have done more exploring and uh, collectibles uh, research and collection more than progressing in the main story. Um, but without further ado, let's jump in. Uh, yes, I am a Slytherin, and I did call my character Tom Riddle. Well, what can I say? I am a fan of Voldemort. Uh, so, as we wait for the login, so I'm currently uh, in this area, which is just south of Hogwarts, um, just around here, as you can see on the map, that's where I am. Uh, so this area where I am, which I have just about started exploring and going around, this is an area that is designed for you to be level 5 or so uh, when reaching this area, for what I could see. Uh, but, uh, because as far as I can tell the game scales to your level, um, it is just as hard. I'm playing on hard difficulty, uh, but I can say with all honesty, yes, I have died once or twice, but completely my fault it was because I was pressing the wrong buttons or doing the wrong spell or not timing my parries uh, properly, eventually took too much damage, and I died. I cannot really blame the build itself. It's more like me making mistake after mistake that eventually leads to me um, getting killed. Um, but anyway, let's review certain aspects of the game. In terms of story, uh, I have just... Uh, I'm going to go to the quest just so you have an idea. I have just attended my first flying class. Uh, so I have done... Uh, as far as the main story, I have progressed to the point where you are uh, just about to go to the room of requirement for the first time. As you can see, required level is 6, but I am already level 20 because of all the exploring and collecting all the collectibles that I have been doing so far. Uh, this is already uh, uh, required level 8, but I mean, same reason as I just mentioned, I have kind of leveled up way too fast for the main story compared um, when when considering the fact that I've been collecting a lot of stuff, exploring a lot of stuff, uh, and I've also been uh, killing a lot of enemies and doing all the side quests as I go. Uh, you can see, uh, if you are familiar with this quest, the, the Dandelion Keys, I've collected 10 so far. Uh, I'm just about to do this one, a demanding delivery, just because I got the broom, so I'm going to do this one now. And then I'm going to progress to the Ghost of Our Love because I just collected this map and I'm going to, to go for it in a minute. Um, also, uh, you got the assignments. I'm going to do the assignments so I can get the Deposo spell, as you can get, is a reward for completing this assignment. But going back to the main story and what stage I am at the moment, I'm just about to go to the Room of Requirement for the first time. But if you go to the challenges, not the map, if, you, if we move one more to the challenges, you can see I've got 71% of the field guide pages and I have just, uh, I'm just about to get to the rumor requirements. So basically, I have in fact been collecting a lot of these pages just because 
I'm interested in the lore, I read all the aspects. In terms of combat, yes, I'm only 9% because I have done certain, some combat, um, but I haven't focused on that just yet. Room of requirements is 0% for obvious reasons, I haven't even been there. Um, quests, 24%, just basically because uh, it, it has to... Oh, I, guess I had one to claim here, actually. Um, this one looks interesting. Um, just because I have only completed six main story quests so far. So that confirms that I have not progressed that much. Um, in terms of, of build itself, this is what I want to talk about now. So if we go to my gear, when you think about a, a build, and in Hogwarts Legacy this is going to be the case as well, everything that influences your character to be more effective on this or that will be part of your build. Everything that is just aesthetics, it's not really part of the build. So I'm not going to mention anything when it comes to uh, cosmetics. I'm going to talk about um, health, defense and offense, which is the things I only uh, can only go for at the moment because I haven't been to the room of requirements just yet. Uh, so I haven't any upgrades going on or any identified items just yet. But here is what I've been doing when it comes to uh, my uh, current gear. As you can see, I got a few legendary items. And if I open certain of these, you see I got an unidentified one there. This one is uh, level is too high. But here I got another legendary on standby. Here I got another two legendaries on standby. Um, here I got pretty much nothing because I sold a lot of the stuff. Here I got another unidentified. Um, and here I got quite a few of legendaries as well, um, as you can see. Now, you might be asking yourselves, how the hell did I get these many legendaries? Uh, just by exploring, honestly. As I go in the castle and around uh, Augsmead, I am constantly, constantly, and I mean constantly, spamming Revelio. And the reason is, it will point out the pages for the collecto so for the collectibles it will point out chests uh, it will point out um, certain uh, side quest um, related items such as those little butterflies that are on the walls that you need to guide to the mirrors and so on so I am constantly just constantly spamming Revelio I got a nice suit actually um, this is just a cosmetic, as you might imagine. It doesn't really reflect what that should look like. Uh, as for my wand, uh, I try to make it as close as Lord Voldemort's wand. Uh, this is as close as I could get. But eventually, I did run into this uh, handle. And I do kind of fancy because it kind of makes it look like a lightsaber from Star Wars. Somehow. So I did eventually... Uh, Accepted that I loved it and I put it on as for the broom. I've got the ember dash broom There's only five brooms to choose from uh, I mean go for whatever you, th you fancy. It's more of an aesthetic thing for what I could tell uh, Maybe with the broom upgrades things change, but as far as I can tell broom itself is more of an uh, Visual thing than they being different from each other one is not faster than the other as far as I can tell so, at level 20, here's what to expect. I currently have 880 health, 153 defense, 125 offense. So, actually, offense happens to be uh, one of my weaknesses. But, I make, it, I make up for it by uh, trying to develop my skills and my combos as much as possible. So, when I'm attacking an enemy, um, I try to combo as much as I can, and I try to parry and stupefy as a, re a reply a response to pairing as much as I can because as you will see in a minute pairing will help you uh, and and combo will also help you and why is that let's go to the talents tree now talents this is where a build comes into play considering I'm level 20 you have access to the talents uh, tree when you reach uh, the main story mission that leads you to um, just before the room of requirements um, and from there you then unlock the talents from the talents 
you have loads to go from. But considering the 15 points that you get by, by level 20, uh, this is what I've decided to unlock. So, Incendio Mastery. Casting Incendio unleashes a ring of flame around you. I mean, there I find Incendio to have a bit of a problem. The range of the spell itself is very, very minimum. The, the enemy actually has to be quite close to you uh, to make it work. So, this is actually a, a, a good spell uh, to upgrade because when casting Incendio, if it unleashes a ring of flame around you, especially against melee enemies such as the goblins, it does help you not only to uh, do extra damage, but to push them away from you, which is the most important part. The next skill I'm going to upgrade is going to be the, Ac uh, the um, Accio Mastery. And the reason is enemies near a target summoned by Accio are also pulled towards you. So if you have three enemies close to each other and you pull one of them with Accio, all three are going to come. So if you combine doing the Accio to all three of them, to then having the Incendio cast on all three of them pretty much at the same time, you are comboing your spells and that will benefit you. It will do increased damage to all of your enemies who are around you, and it's something to go for. I have not bothered to uh, go for Levioso Mastery just yet, because, well, talented points are a bit limited, and I want to talk about um, the, my next choices so far. So for the Dark Arts, yes, I am Lord Voldemort after all. My name is Tom Riddle. I am going to join the dark side of the Force when it comes to Hogwarts Legacy. So, uh, considering that these are the ones that are available for now, I decided to go with these. So, Disarming Curse, Expelliarmus has the same effect as a curse on enemies. So, you see the little green cross that sticks to the enemy when you hit with Expelliarmus. Uh, so, you will not only disarm the enemy, but you also make him cursed. Cursed enemies take increased damage. So, this is what this upgrade, this talent will do, is that every time you cast Expelliarmus, the enemy not only is going to be disarmed, but is also going to be cursed. Therefore, he's going to take extra damage. The same thing I decided to unlock was with the Stunning Curse, which uh, the Stupefy has the same effect as a curse on enemies. So, as I said, this is why it is important to parry and stupefy in response as much as possible, because you will be cursing your enemies as you go. So if you do Expelliarmus at one of your enemies, that enemy is cursed, and then another one of the enemies next to him casts a spell on you, and you parry the spell, and you reply with a stupefy on that one, you got two enemies cursed. So you are building up your damage not only towards the enemy that you might be focused on, but the ones around him. So you want to go for that. When it comes to my third option here in the Dark Arts talent, Blood Curse. Dealing damage to a cursed target inflicts damage to all cursed targets. So again, not only you are doing extra damage to the Expelliarmus enemy, um, to the dis disarmed enemy that you cursed, uh, the moment you parry and stupefy another enemy and he gets cursed as well, every time you damage one of them, you will be damaging the other one as well, without even even having to hit him. So this is the beauty of combining all these things together. The more enemies you can curse, the more damage you will be inflicting. Uh, one of my next priorities as well will be to, in, uh, to unlock the Enduring Curse. A cursed effect remains on an enemy for a longer period of time. So by using all these Expelliarmus curses, um, stupefy curses um, I want them to stay cursed for longer so that also helps increasing your damage but now for the next one which is in the core side on the core side um, I pretty much upgraded everything that I found to be useful for my playstyle. I cannot say this is going to suit every single person. But the way I play, I play very aggressive, I try to combo spells as much as possible. Um, and I also try to always have uh, the, the spells themselves, not just the basic cast, at least to have one of them constantly available so if i rotate through my spells i want that by the time i use the last of those spells the first one is 
available again. So basically the idea, the idea is to constantly create a rotation circle that you use the first spell, you combine it with four or five basic costs, you use your second spell, you combine again with four or five basic costs if you can, you use your third spell, you combine again and you keep going and you keep rotating. So if the basic, basic cost impacts reduce spell countdowns, this will help that rotation happen much easier. Another one that which I decided to go for is the Protego Absorption. So success, successful Protego blocks will contribute to the Ancient Magic Meter and perfect Protego blocks contribute even more. This is when you do the parries, is when you do the perfect Protegos. This is when you parry. So if you buy Protegos using Protego or pairing with the Protego, uh, will increase the ancient magic meter you know what this means you will get access to your let's call it ultimate um, just for to make it easier to understand to your ultimate attacks from the ancient magic side of your character way faster the next one i want to go for is the ability swift holding down dodge allows you to vanish quickly and reappear nearby I mean, initially, I didn't really uh, unlock this one. It was one of the last ones I went for. And the reason why is that if you take a notice of the little example going on the right, can you see how far the character actually travels? It's It covers quite a long distance. So when you are fighting certain enemies that jump high in the air and then smash on the floor, having this option can genuinely save you from a lot of damage because you are you are not just going to dodge the attack but you will be teleporting so to speak for for to a very safe distance that you can immediately start going for damage um, now to the next one spell knowledge and it comes with spell knowledge one and spell knowledge two this is the typical uh, upgrade for to have access to more um, spell diamonds to slot more spells and not a lot more to say besides that another one I went for is uh, wind of Eld heals you to a greater effect and I decided not only to upgrade it once but to upgrade it twice and I can tell you one thing one potion and one potion only fills my health meter from zero to completely full so I cannot stress enough for your own sake, especially if you are playing on hard difficulty, do unlock these as quickly as you can because it will make a difference because you don't want to have to use two or three potions to fully heal your character in the, middle of the, in the middle of combat. You want to be able to do that with one single potion so you don't have to use ten potions with one in one fight. So, again... Ultimately, it's your choice what fits your style, but I think this is the kind of option that fits, uh, fits anyone's style. Uh, going for the next one, Evasion Absorption. Su successfully evading an unblockable attack with dodge contributes to the Ancient uh, Magic Meter. So not only we are contributing from the parries and the protegos, but we also are contributing to filling the Ancient Magic Meter faster by dodging. And remember, because we kind of teleport with the dodge, everything helps, everything, all these talents are connected to each other, everything helps each other. Now, here's one that I cannot stress enough how important this thing is. Revelio Mastery increases the range of Revelio. I know this has absolutely nothing to do with combat, but again, if you are on the look to level up your character fast, you want to have Revelio because Revelio will help you find the pages for the challenges. It will help you find chests. It will help you find um, butterflies and other side quest um, items that you might need uh, to progress, such as the flying keys for the dandelion keys. Um, so yes, get this one as soon as you can because it will help you level up even faster. Another one that I would like to mention is Basic Cast Airborne Absorption. Basic Cast Impacts on Airborne Enemies contribute more to the Ancient Magic Meter. Why did I unlock this? Here comes the fact that when I attack an enemy, I do have the tendency to combine my spells in this way. 
I use Leviosa to cast the enemy into the air. I do three, four, five uh, basic casts, and then I use Accio to pull the enemy to me, and then I use one, two basic casts, and then I use Incendio on the enemy, and then I do another two, three casts, and then there he goes, he goes, he goes. So the enemy stays in the air this entire time, and you are just combining your spells. So you are if the enemy is airborne your basic basic cast is not only to co going to allow you to do damage and combo your spells but it also going to allow more of the ancient magic meter to be filled another thing i would like to um, raise your awareness is your magic meter your ancient magic meter naturally uh, feels faster if you take uh, if you combo your spells without taking damage so the more the higher your combos the more uh, ancient magic will be uh, provided so everything again helps uh, connect to everything else that you are using on this build uh, next one that i want to talk about is stealth and the reason is uh the stealth itself only has four perks to unlock but i want to explain the reason why this is important the sense of secrecy which enemies ability to detect you is reduced and allows you to sprint while using uh, uh, disillusionment uh, disillusionment <laughs> i can't say this word properly um, anyway the reason why this is useful if you are about to go into a fight where there's three or four enemies it does help that you can maneuver yourself to a position that will allow you to approach the fight in a more in a safer way so if you have the ability to move around your enemies without being seen uh, to position yourself better to to then initiate the combat this is this is the reason why i went with these two options so i can maneuver myself in a way that i can initiate the combat against multiple enemies from a safer position I'm playing on hard. Again, it's very much necessary. Room of requirement. I've got zero and honestly, it's because I haven't even been there. And because I haven't been there, I decided I'm going to leave this for now. Although I can tell some of these can be quite useful, such as the Adorus Potion Potency, which allows you to be invulnerable and deflect projectile attacks back to enemies. Spells, anything will just reflect on you and you will just be invulnerable. Uh, as long as it's not melee, you will still take damage from melee. Um, in any case, uh, this kind of covers the build um, when it comes to the talents. Going back to the gear, I cannot stress enough that at this point in time, I wouldn't bother with uh, paying too much attention to what traits you got going, what, what level is this. I have genuinely just been using what I collect as I go. I haven't spent any coins on any pieces of gear so far uh, and i've been doing quite okay i've got 880 health 153 defense 125 offense they are most likely not the greatest stats out there for level 20 but it is working quite well for me and again i have died a couple of times um, and it was for my own mistakes i cannot really blame what i've got going on uh, for what's what's happened now back to uh the game now here are a few uh, advices that i would like to leave to the community in my first um, god of war legacy build video as soon as you can as soon as you can start uh, unlocking the the merlin trials the reason why i say this is you you might feel tempted to ignore these not to go for these but uh, there is a challenge that by doing these, which I think, yeah, there you go. Complete Merlin Trials. Inventory expansion reward. So increases the storage for your gear. The reason why I value this is because you are going, when you are exploring and uh, getting your rewards, you are going to eventually run out of inventory space. So the, f the faster you get access to these, uh, I have just started them myself, to be honest. I have just unlocked them. Uh, and I'm going to focus on collecting all of these uh, shortly, as you can see on the map. Um, I've got a lot of them around me. I got one, two, three, four, 
uh, just around here uh, five you know so I'm going to go for these straight away uh, so I can get extra gear uh, slots and the reason why it is important is because not only uh, you will be able to carry more loot but you also then be able to sell that loot to make money because you will eventually run into a better item you switch to the better item and then what are you going to do with the old one you're going to sell it make money there's no need to destroy them if you can easily go to a shop just like i've got one right behind me uh, just go to a shop and sell it make money don't waste money i i am not entirely sure at this stage how valuable money is going to be but especially if you're playing on hard i i want to believe that it's going to be important to buy upgrades uh, and to have access to to better gear in the future uh, another thing i would like to mention is back to the challenges the field guide pages every time you collect a page you get 80 experience now make the math if you collect a lot of pages you are going to eventually level up even faster and some pages actually happen to be a few steps away from each other uh, so i cannot stress enough spam revelio so you can access the pages collect the pages move forward uh, another thing i would like to to to, 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 to say is when you use Revelio, right? This is the normal sound of Revelio. But when when there is a page present, there's a sound that sounds like a bell. So when you do this, there's a bling. So when you hear that sound, it means there is a page around. Explore, look around you, look up, look down, look behind the corner spam it again because then you will be able where you can access to actually collect the page so uh yeah go for it use revalue spam revalue you want to spam revalue as much as you can now there's a little more i have to say guys as i said i am only 10 hours in but i've done a lot of exploration when it comes to the pages and i'm just about to do these things as well to to unlock further inventory if you guys have any questions please feel free to uh, ask in the comment section down below um, if you have any suggest suggestions please feel free to do um, mention these down as well I very much appreciate any advice from you guys or any suggestions you might have um, if you think I missed anything uh, when it comes for the first 10 hours of the game please feel free to mention I like to be as spoiler free as I can uh, in my own gameplay um, I haven't done any research, I haven't looked into anything. I'm just playing the game as I go, exploring as much as I can and enjoying as much as I possibly can. That's actually a beautiful sight uh, to end the video. So again, please, if you haven't subscribed, do consider doing so. The, your, support is, your support is very much appreciated. We are running very close to 1,500 subscribers. I can't thank this community enough. You guys have been great especially with the whole God of War scene. It helped the channel grow quite a lot. Um, and again, like the video if it did help you with any form of, of advice. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!